are drinking their prop. Probably a bad idea, but who really cares? <laughs> There's a lot of excitement on this, you know. I know. Rightfully I mean, so. well, rightfully, it so. is. It's a big day. Um, it is, and not just because <laughs> of what we're drinking, but because of everything else going on in the world. Do you, um, do you mean because we have a new president, Brandon? We don't have one yet. We have a president elect. That's good enough for me and most of the country, baby. Yep, that is that is that is correct. That's as far as we'll get with politics tonight. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Um, we got prop, baby. It's prop days. The first day of prop days, uh, which is brand new for Goose Island this year because of uh, the pandemic. They've decided to do it a different way, and it's uh, over a course of is it a couple weeks, two weeks. Uh, I don't, I don't it's remember like two or days. three weeks. I think it goes up until like Black Friday, like the weekend before Black Friday. Oh, right. I think. I think. Yeah. But uh, for those who don't know, um, you know, Bourbon County Proprietors is uh, the Chicago only available, a uh, Chicago only um, variant of Bourbon County. And each year, uh, for, uh, is it since they've done prop? Day? Yeah, since they've done prop, uh, there's been a, a special day uh, that uh, you. No, actually, oh. so the, oh, the first year, right? Yeah, so the first, I don't, it, it maybe it been the first couple of years there wasn't a prop day because then when they re-released Rare, they did uh, Rare Day. Yes, you're right. And then the following years they've done Prop Day. That's right. So it's been going on for. A bit, at least. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's a day where people, uh, you, before it was, you know, purchase tickets or you were just able to show up. Now it's a lottery system. And if you win tickets, you get to go and you get an allotment. And you also get to try um, all of the years, uh, th- that year's uh, variants of Bourbon County, including earlier Bourbon County. Then you get your bottles Correct. and uh, some swag to take home. But this year they did yeah. the, they did, the, they did it different. Yeah, so just going back from my memory, I think the first prop year, uh, prop day year was 2016 because that that sounds um, about right. Because I brought Becca that year, um, and the email that I had got um, had said like rare day or something like that. Yes. And everyone's like rare day. Why does it say rare day? I was like, I don't know. That's what the, it is. That's the one where you, me, you, and Mike went together with Becca. Yes, that was yep. a lot of fun. That was at and that was at the actual Barrel Warehouse, and it was. Uh, it was a is a bit different. You got to try bourbon. You got a sample of bourbon county, right? Regular bourbon county. You got your bot. Oh no, you got prop and bourbon county. You got to try those samples. Plus, you got tokens to try other Goose Island beers. You also stumbled upon the three one two vending machine that was just giving out free three one two. And Correct. if I'm not mistaken, you also found out about the secret location where they were just pouring random variants. Uh, in, in in a dirt in, field, in, yeah, <laughs> and nobody knew about it. We were we were like the first bus to get there because it started at the Fulton Tap Room, took us to the Barrel House. We were like one of the first buses to get there, and by the time it was full, I mean that dirt field was just packed with people. Oh yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, I mean that was that was probably one of my like I mean as far as prop days go, that was my favorite prop day because it was just it was smaller. Yeah, it was more compact. Um, it was easier to find any everything, um, and yeah, the thing with the three one two vending machine and like the, <laughs> like the vendors were easy to find. Like yeah. yeah, it was it was a pretty solid setup that they had, and I understand why it's grown. Of um, course, yeah, as most you know, quote unquote beer fests do. Um, but I mean, even then, like the last couple of years, we went was awesome too. So yeah, and. and- each year, last year was a lot of fun. We know um, we don't, we would try to do a recording of it, but uh, that did not work out. But we ended up, you know, doing our pre and post uh, prop day uh, episodes. You guys can uh, go back about one year and listen to that. That was a lot of fun. We made our own variants, and we'll see what we do this year. I'm sure we'll do some more Bourbon County stuff. But I digress. Brad and I were both lucky enough to go ahead and get our allotments today, um, and we found out we were an hour apart and. Before we get into the beer, I think we can both agree that Goose Island did a phenomenal job on spacing this out. Um, the amount of space we started in the United Center parking lot and they drove all the way down to Fulton, but it was it was very clear how to get there. Everybody was knowledgeable, 
And if there was a line, if it was super busy, it would have still run super smooth in my Correct. opinion. They did yep. an awesome job. Yeah. Kudos to them like that. And you, and you know what? Like not being able to go to prop day, this was a perfect alternative. Like yeah. just being able to smoothly go in and get it. Like everyone was super nice. Um, the box that it comes in is awesome. Yes, super. Um, cool. I did a, I did my boxing, and I did an unboxing on our Instagram. If you're interested, I'm, I'm, I'm even gonna keep the paper that the glass was wrapped in. I did the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, and and what I'm really curious about is the question mark bottle. So, yes, uh, we'll talk about we that. Can, yeah, yeah, and we can definitely probably do a separate episode on those. But like, you mean we're not drinking yeah, that tonight too? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe we're about to drink a full bottle. I, I can't. I've, I've done it once already this year, the last year's prop. But I, I'm 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 so excited about this time of year. I know we just did, you know, the bourbon barrel aged beers. We've talked about a lot on this show. We we love it. We're we're very fortunate to live in a city where, you know, bourbon barrel aged beers were basically created here. And oh, sorry, I don't know if you guys can hear that. There's a fire truck driving by my house. Uh, <laughs> Um, and we also, you know, with the last episode with Revolutions, uh, Deepwood series, you know, uh, we had a chance to try those. Like, we're just very fortunate. I'm always excited to get to try these beers. And we've been very fortunate as well to basically have prop every year. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've scored. And if not, if we have not gone to prop day, we've actually been in a position to where we were able to get it. Yeah. Um, we've tried all of yeah. them at least once. Correct. So, yeah, I'm super excited that. Uh, we have it this year, and and and, I'm, and I'm, it's it's amazing that they give you two bottles of prop. Yeah, with your... yeah, it's 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 awesome. Yeah, if yep. if you guys look at the post, we you know we I, I posted what you got: two bottles of prop, the special stout number four, which sounds really good, and then the mystery bottle and a taster glass. So it, it's it's all very cool and very nice. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, before we get into it, I wanted to just read on there uh, before we start talking about and drinking this beer, which I'm dying to taste. Uh, I'm going to just read from their webpage real quick. Is that okay, Brandon? Do you mind? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, Proprietors Bourbon County Stout is meant to show our immense gratitude to our neighbors here in Chicago. The loyal and adventurous fans who support help bring Bourbon County Stout to towering new heights. Each year, this release will differ from the previous year. A special variant created for Chicago and unique to the year it was released. Whether your first sip is today or was from that first batch in 1992, thank you for lifting us up on your big shoulders and joining us every year to celebrate the original bourbon barrel aged out. So we'll get to this and then we'll, uh, you know, I'll I'll read the description and then we'll drink it. Here we go. (laughs) So, so before we get into this so far, what has been your favorite prop? What year? 2017, baby. Bananas Foster. Oh, you know what? And I still don't think I've ever had that. That's the only one I've never had. Oh, man. We can, we're can we going to French press that this year then. <laughs> Dude, it is so good. No offense, Eric. Yours was also very good. Our friend Eric Flores, uh, who uh, did last year's prop, still got the sign bottle. <clears throat> um, yeah, that, that one's my favorite. It just, oh, God, it's so good. And one of the years that had coconut, uh, which also was like last year, but the... Second year, the first year had coconut too. Yeah, either the first or second had coconut. That one was like it was on point. But here we I go. I think I have. I think I still have the first one. Ooh, we should probably drink that soon, or you should probably drink that soon. <laughs> I always say we, like, <laughs> like I've got some type of like, hey, well, we should probably drink that. Not all your beers. Well, for at this show. point, it's like most of the most of the beer I drink is with you, <laughs> that's, and that's true. That that I think is the larger format bottle. So, oh yeah, we sh- we should probably drink that then. <laughs> yes, agreed. All right, here Let's we go. This uh, this year's <laughs> proprietor's Bourbon County Stout was inspired by third generation Italian American brewer Emily, and I'm sorry if I botch your last name, Cosmal, K O S M A, Love of Spumoni, a classic fr- uh, Italian frozen treat. Spumoni is a tri colored frozen dessert that contains candy fruit and nuts between each layer, historically including flavors such as pistachio, cherry, and chocolate. So, blended with fresh pistachios, cacao nibs, candied amarina cherries and natural vanilla flavors the 2020 proprietors bourbon county stout is incredibly complex and layered with cocoa nut dark fruit notes with hints of vanilla and oak emily who also created the concept for the 2016 proprietors is our first uh, brewer to have two proprietor concept pack for or picked for release uh i don't remember what 2016 was i think that was a pepper one 
And I think I like 2016. I think Ron awesome. and I talked about how we like that one. The spicy. It's good. Yes. Yeah, so I, I haven't tried it yet, but just smelling it. Oh, yeah. The candy cherry is definitely heavy on the nose. Yeah, I'm about to smell it as well. Hmm. Mine might be too cold. I'm not getting a lot of candy cherry right away. Yeah, so like I so what I had done is oh, there, I, put, yeah, I, get, I get it. Yeah, I put mine in the, the fridge for a while and then at like seven I took it out. So I did that originally too, and then I watched some TV. Put it back in. <laughs> yeah. I did. I ran back downstairs. Um I'm gonna take my first sip here. Here we go. Mm. Hey oh that is that you know what? That is not what I expected in the best way possible. As in, I thought this was going to be something that was when I heard Spumoni, I was like, I don't know about all that. But <laughs> <laughs> this this works, man. Um, I I get I, I it, you get vanilla, you get chocolate, you get the bourbon. There is that bit of candy cherry. I get a lot of pistachio. No, maybe at the end, maybe the back end, like. There's a little nuttiness, like right at the end, um, but this is pretty freaking good, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it's tasty. And what I what I was worried about, especially with the cherry mm. thing, was kind of reminiscent of Mon Cherry from last year. Goo. I was I was worried that that would come through too much in like a cough syrup kind of way. Yeah, uh, but it didn't. The, and um, and sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say the I've now taken a third sip. It really oh, I finished the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I chugged it. <laughs> oh, fuck. Dude, you're doing this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, it The aftertaste in my mouth is Spumoni. And I've had Spumoni before. I remember, I mean, I'm Italian. I'm a Sicilian, you know, so I've had the... Uh, this is racist. I shouldn't do that. Uh, I am a Sicilian, though. <laughs> and I've had Spumoni. It's probably been a while, but, man, that is... It's almost like there is, like, this ice cream aftertaste in my mouth from after drinking this man this is you know what i can agree with you on that like i and again i don't i'm sure i've had spumoni Mm -hmm. um i don't even know if like when i was in italy i had spumoni it's quite possible Mm -hmm. uh but the there's this creaminess that i'm getting at the end yeah and like that i think that's what you maybe the same thing for you is that's reminiscent of like an ice cream kind of creaminess that's going down and it's like but it's like it, it's not like vanilla ice cream it's all those flavors in a creaminess kind of melding together exactly what i am i'm not upset about it but what i'm missing again is the pistachio because i do like pistachio and i was really really hoping that it would come through yes yes um and it's if it's there it's very subtle and to the point where like i can barely notice it so i'm curious to see and i, I don't know if age would help that come through it will probably deepen the other flavors you know and still kind of override the pistachio but nonetheless still a pretty solid yeah prop. yeah i there the first sip like i said at the back end <clears throat> there was some nuttiness to it and maybe that's just because my brain's telling me oh hey look for it because you know it's in there and you're looking for it but overall i mean i'm, I'm getting everything else of vanilla even now like the next couple of sips I've taken, uh, I've gotten some of those, the, the cherry flavor, flavor to it. And it's just, it's, it's amazing how, when I opened it up and I, I took my first, you know, smell and you're like, Oh, I smell cherries. I'm like, I don't smell anything. Now that I don't smell anything. <laughs> I can't smell anything. Oh no. COVID test time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I just smelled uh, bourbon County. You know, I smelled barrel. I smelled like, chocolate and vanilla. Uh, and then as I, I swirled it around and brought it back up to my nose, I was like, ooh, no, there is some some dark fruit uh, cherry notes in there. I'm doing it now. I just swirled it around again, and it's it's very nice. This is this is so tasty. Oh, man. Yeah, this is probably one we should have split tasty because it is so it, – it is it's, as good as it is. It's super sweet, I think. Yeah, I would say it's probably going to be the sweetest. If uh, what's the other one that sounds like it's going to be sweet? The the caramel apple one that they got this year. That yeah. one sounds like that would also be sweet. Everything else sounds like it's not as sweet. Uh, what is it? Oh, uh, Carmella. 
Carmel Ale because everything else has something else with it. Like the regular Bourbon County style is good. Kentucky Fog is supposed to be like a, a drink, um, a cocktail. Oh, um, yeah. Although uh, uh, Special Four Stout might be sweet with the maple, but, you know, we'll see. Everything else doesn't sound that uh, uh, um, sweet. But, yeah, uh, there is it, – it's not like – to me, it's not like lactose uh, or or overly adjunct sweet. It is just a, a kind of a sweet, sticky beer. And from what uh, when I listened to Shalanda's uh, media night or post media night uh, Bourbon County episode, they were talking about how the regular Bourbon County wasn't very sweet, and it was like not dry, but it was definitely drier than that. Was nice to hear because you know I do like. Those big sweet barrel aged stouts, I'm kind of over the non barrel aged sweet stouts. Like I just can't, I can't do it. my stomach. I'm getting too old. My stomach can't do it anymore. But this <laughs> because it's the because of the barrel, the sweetness, um, I don't know. It makes it like a cocktail, like to me, like a, a, very, a sweet cocktail. It's just it's it's definitely a this one is definitely a dessert beer, and I'm happy to hear that the other ones are not. Now, if we go to the comparison of doing the Deepwood beers that we just tried, you know, Death Star is an incredibly sweet. Cafe Death was an incredibly sweet. Uh, sweet. Even uh, uh, Maple. Yeah. Death by Maple. Is that what it's right? Yeah. Death yep. by Maple. Um, that maple, was, death. Uh, maple Death. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about Death, <laughs> by, death by Cherries. That's coming out soon. Uh, maple Death was, wasn't was incredibly sweet, but it had that maple, you know, flavor to it without it being super, super sweet, which they, they nailed that perfectly to balance it. So yeah, I, I agree with you. There is, there is a bit of sweetness to this, but it, it's not putting, putting, putting me off. It's putting, yeah, you know, putting me on stutter though. <laughs> you know, and the one thing that I would say is lacking from this box that we got, it was like, I'm really surprised that, and I knew going in that it wasn't going to be there, but like, I'm really surprised that like, they just didn't include regular bourbon County. Yeah, that would have been cool. And because, and, and the reason because. I thought about that is, too. Is like there, you know, there's so much of it. And like I was, <laughs> right, in, right, Benny, right. I was in Benny's the other day and they were selling cases of last year. And I was like, I'm not paying 120 bucks for a case of Bourbon County. But. It's there. You know, the yeah. And the fact that there is so much of it, like, I mean, come on, Goose. You could have threw us a bottle. You know? You know, because like e even at prop day, yeah. like, did, wait, so last year when we went, did we get a regular Bourbon County? No, no. Each year it's just. Oh, you know what? No. Yeah. So we didn't. Yeah. Each year it's just the two. Well, not each year, but the last two years has been two props and something else. <laughs> this year was the first year that there was four bottles for what we paid. Last year you could do the four bottles. That was, you know, the old double barrel fiasco that Tony didn't uh, uh, take part in. <clears throat> um, but each but year. Was, no, but it still wasn't four bottles. Was it two props and a double barrel? No, and then Cafe Ole. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Not so wait, Olay. did you Cafe get. Cafe Oya, sorry. Did you, get, did you get that with the one you purchased? I got Cafe Oya, yeah. Yeah, so it was three bottles or four bottles is Correct. what it was. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So each yeah. each year, this is the first year where it was four bottles. That was that's what you had to get. You couldn't get no, and you know what? It, it makes it easier for them because for oh, packaging, for sure. like yeah, I think I think having it set like I don't mind doing the four. I oh, mean, I just poured a little bit more. I'm so excited. Uh, I don't mind. <laughs> I definitely don't mind doing the four bottle thing. Uh, Bourbon County purchases have become. Uh, a yearly after you introduced me to him, Brandon, uh, when you had Laura buy me a four pack many moons ago. That's right. Before she and I were actually <laughs> married, uh, and I stupidly tried drinking two 12 ounce bottles back to back and had to dump this half of the second bottle. I'm like, this is too much. What am I doing? Um, no. Each each uh, each year, you know, Bourbon County has become a part of like the beginning of the holidays for me. So now it's either. You know, Clark and I have done Plop Day, which you know we're we're, we're still going to do, and you're invited to join us. Um, oh, thanks! As we brought as we brought him onto the podcast, we bring you into Plop Day. Uh, <laughs> that's why you and Clark have to have your own show. And <laughs> uh, so, if I'm not getting prop, you know, I don't mind. Uh, I feel very lucky this year because I did get the Prop Day, and I didn't win uh, the lottery for Benny's to buy any of the other Bourbon Jewel. County. Yeah, I didn't. I actually I didn't enter Jewel. I did not enter Jewel. Did Jewel did Jewel release today or I don't know. No. I don't know if they did their who who won or who not who who not. Well I, that's what I was wondering if, if they released the winners yet. I don't even know. 
I don't know either, but I'm I'm I love that this time of year I get a chance to to drink these beers. And what I learned from drinking the last you know last year's prop uh, a couple weeks ago, by my birthday, the the this other prop and the other two will be gone. I I can't I'm not going to sit on these longer than Feb till February. Yeah, as, as long as you're saving one for me, that's fine. Hey, man, I still got the one from last year for you and I. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I brought you to prop day, and I can take you back. <laughs> cool, you're going to take me back to prop day? Thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, totally, dude. You know, so, you know what You know what the one thing, though, is like when I went to pick up the bottle, so after I went to United Center and I got like to the brewery and I saw all the people outside drinking, I was like, you were tempted. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to pull over and drink? <laughs> Dude, I you know what? As I as I was getting my box, I had to go all the way to line for like the, the fourth uh the, the very Me end. too. Oh my god, we got the same person. She was so nice. Yeah, she was. <laughs> um she made sure I didn't hit anybody pulling out or I didn't get hit with someone pulling out behind me. Um I saw people sitting out there and I was like, Man, I know they've got some sort of Bourbon County on tap and we should have planned this better so that we were both there at the same time. We could have parked and grabbed a, a beer and uh, while we were there and kind of had a yeah. prop day. Next year, hopefully we can just be a prop day again. I do hope that I get a chance. There are a couple places I know in the city that will have uh, bottles on Black Friday that don't have lines out the door. They'll have some. So I will, still on Black Friday, probably go and grab uh, one regular and a variant of some sort. Boy, as I'm talking, man, I, there still is just this ice cream aftertaste in my mouth that i'm just really enjoying this is awesome yep no i i'm with you on that man uh every time i take a sip it's it just lingers and it's uh, what it reminds me of is not ice cream you know so yes ice cream but you know when like you have a sundae or something and it melts at the bottom and then you drink everything that's combined with like the cherry juice and all that kind of stuff you yes see that? yes that's what i'm getting yeah i like that this is it's a lot of ice cream. Like it, it almost reminds me of not so much Spumoni as a little bit more of the aftertaste, aftertaste of like Neapolitan ice cream. Yeah. See that, that would be a perfect example. Yes. Cause you got the strawberry and the chocolate. Yeah. And- yeah. I feel like I get that. Although who, who makes the Neapolitan ice uh, beer? The, um, shit. Uh, that it's is- in uh, Michigan. It is Saga talk, right? Yep. So yeah. Got- ah, dude, that Neapolitan uh, beer is so good. And then they do a barrel age version of it that is almost. Ooh, not had that. that it, it's really good barrel aged beer, but if you start with the regular first, because that is just a delicious stout that does really taste like Neapolitan ice cream. Yeah. Barrel aged version is good, especially when you want to have a barrel aged stout and there's those fun, you know, flavors in there. The barrel aging almost takes away from uh, the, the Neapolitan ice cream, which, you know, yeah. if you want to taste well, it. Well, it. Yeah. it would. It would because of the wood. <laughs> hey, ooh. Um, and what I was going to say is like, you know, and I'm kind of going back and forth on this. Like, this would be good with like a little dollop of ice cream in it. Mm-hmm. Um like the ice cream would taste amazing, but like I, I'm almost I'm almost thinking like once it melts and it gets in there and I had to drink that, like, that might be a little too much. That might be a little too yeah. I'm getting okay, so now if I wasn't drinking a whole bottle, yeah, it'd be yeah. fine. Like <laughs> you're gonna be fine after drinking the whole bottle. Uh, <laughs> oh. I uh the, the I just took another sip. It's it's kind of nice how I'm getting the different layers of it because now that last sip was a lot of like candy cherry and not in like a gross way of the like you know the cough syrup that was like real candy cherries this is man i'm really happy about this beer like i said i i wasn't incredibly excited about it when i saw the, what it was going to be but I, I am very happy with the way that it's turned out and i feel like if you sit on a beer like this it is going to you're going to lose the awesomeness of it especially with prop man like i don't think i can save prop anymore prop needs to be drank uh drunk drink drunk fresh drink to get drunk drunk fresh <laughs> i know i always want to say drink it needs to get drank no it needs to be drunk to get drunk fresh like me yes. fresh <laughs> so kids, kids <laughs> these kids still say fresh right these damn kids mm. 
But yeah, man, uh, overall, I will say this is uh, very good. I'm looking forward to trying the other beers um, that missed. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like mystery or Mr. Eight, something like that. Uh, it, it, that just sounds awesome. Uh, it says it's an ale, a bourbon barrel aged ale with coconut. And that has a aging life of two years. Well, so does the prop. If you look at the top of the box, it says two years. Yep. It says yep. develops in the bottle for up to two years. Yeah. I, I just don't believe that shit anymore. <laughs> Well, you know, and and I'm kind of in that same camp, but we've had some good beers that have aged. Yes, that is very true. I'm still going back to that one from like 2009 that we drank. Oh, man. Which one was that? The old stock. The old stock. Yeah. Yep. See, I feel like there's, but that's not like a heavily adjuncted beer. You know, regular Bourbon County, I feel like will age well. All these, these blended barrel ones would age well. It's the ones that have like, you know, coconut, a vanilla, yeah, uh, stuff like it that. It depends. It depends on the uh, the adjuncts, I guess. Mm-hmm. I feel like chocolate won't fade very much. Oh man, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, that sip right there is a lot of fucking cherry. As this warms up, <laughs> like you know, it, it's good. It's like cherry and vanilla. I'm starting to taste it more. Like I'm glad that this bottle is warming up and that I'm having as much as this bottle that I'm having. Um, it's it's starting to taste. I'm starting to get more out of it still. But like you said, uh, no pistachio. I had pistachio on the end uh, after the first sip. But right now, no pistachio bows, man. No. And then That's like the there's, a, call it, pistachio there's a flavor that I keep thinking that may be like, like nutty, but it's <sighs> not like it's not pistachio. I don't know. Um and I, like maybe I'll wake up in the morning and my mouth will taste like pistachios and I'll be like, oh, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wake up in the there? morning and my mouth will taste <laughs> like nuts. You're right. It does say uh, develops in the bottle for two years. What was I was looking for? Oh, the ABV on this is ooh, 14.2. And man, this is pretty freaking fresh too. Uh, we wait, what is that? Oh, drink by. Yeah. So this so I'm assuming this was bottled on October 22nd. Uh, or I'm sorry, October 16th, 2020, because it says Best Buy. October uh, 16th, 2022 on it. That's cool. Contains wheat and pistachios. <clears throat> so there are pistachios in there. They had to put the warning on there. I, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know how much more I can say about this uh, without constantly repeating myself other than it being delicious. And maybe I'll get some pistachios for the next one and eat it eat them while I'm, while I'm drinking those. Well, again, like, so again, maybe we're wrong and that will develop a little bit with, you know, well, I won't find out Brandon cause I'm not going to age mine. I've already gone over this. All right. I'm not going to age it. Quit tell me to age my beer. No, I'm talking, I'm not talking about years. I'm talking about like a couple of months. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I know. I was just messing around too. Um, yeah, I think it, <laughs> um, it would be fun, though, now, thinking about it, uh, for all the French press that we've done, maybe we try and uh, get some of those non-salted pistachios and see if we could uh, let a little bit of Bourbon County sit on that and see what kind of pistachio flavor we can get out of it. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice. Well, you know what? And then even then, so going back to, so this is kind of going reminiscent of like the pumpkin episode. We're not getting what we're looking for, which is the pistachio. How do we get that? from a beer. And I'm not saying that we go and brew our own beers and add pistachios, but the, we want to make it like applicable to the bourbon County. So maybe when we get a bunch of bourbon counties, Mm -hmm. we try that. And yeah, I would try to roast some uh, pistachios and get that in there. That would be a good idea. The other thing that when you brought up pistachio it made me think of when clark and i did our plop day uh when we didn't win prop tickets but then ended up meeting someone from goose island who got us in there um that was the first time i had hop butcher's milk stachio which is their pistachio milk stout it's a collaboration they do with dry hop uh, brewers here in chicago and it's chocolate pistachio and vanilla and i believe they just yeah it says milk stout brewed with cacao nibs and natural pistachio flavor that beer 
tastes like there's pistachios in it and not in a weird, gross way. It is delicious. And I, love I mean, it. what I would love to say about this, this beer is. It's a bit nutty. <laughs> yes, as Austin Powers would say. <laughs> you almost had it queued up perfectly. Almost. I know. It was, well, it was, it was, good it was too long. Good it was too long of an MP3. Hmm. Good job. Well done. Well done. Uh, We're yeah, going to fly here. <laughs> hey, we, we got to figure this out somehow, right? Um, yeah, that, that that's another good pistachio beer. Um, I don't know if I'm... Yeah, I guess I'm not sure if I'm... I don't know if I really want to figure out a way to get pump, uh, not pumpkin, but pistachio. pistachio, yeah, into a beer. Uh, not something I really want to have all the time. But like I said, this is this yeah. is a good beer. Uh, I really like it. I'm happy that uh, we got a chance to drink this together, even though we're not together, and that uh, we both got the opportunity to win this, as did uh, Clark. So Clark, um, now that you're listening to this, since you're not on this episode, now you know all about the beer that you're picking up next weekend. And you're drinking by yourself, like we do. Know. Don't tell Clark that we picked up his beers early. I said, "Hey, we're Clark. We're here early." Yeah, I. <laughs> it's weird because that worked for me too. Because I said I was Clark. You said you were Clark as well, huh? Oh yeah. Nice. I mean, I got a double lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got. I mean, that's why I'm tomorrow. I'm going to drink another prop, and then Monday I'll drink a prop, and then I'm going to save one for my birthday. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> but I'm going to slam all of those special mystery uh, eight uh, beers. Mystery eight. I don't know. I thought it was mystery, but it is like Mr. Eight. That's an eight at the end there. If you look at it, I don't know if you have it in front of you. I Well, I got the box. I guess yeah. I have to open it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it goes on for Mr. Eight Barrel Aged Coconut Ale. Ooh. Yep, does Mr. Eight. It, does it say the ABV on that guy? 13.2. Nice. And it says ale, so I don't know if it's a stout. It is definitely some type of ale. But with it being uh, with that coconut, I'm I'm going to. Yeah, it does say barrel aged ale with coconut. I love that it says beer for drinking, not for selling. Thanks awesome. for reminding me. Brew barrel brewed barrel aged and bottled in Goose Island. Yeah, baby, contains wheat. Drink by whenever you want. <laughs> Wheat? Oh my god! <laughs> I, I'm allergic to wheat. Yeah, so I'm 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 pretty stoked about uh, trying that when we do. And uh, yeah, man, I, that's 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 really all I got on this. Unless you got something else, man, lay it on me. No, man, this is a again solid beer. I'm excited we got it. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to see what other people think about it, uh, especially Clark, yeah. <clears throat> since he was not a part of this episode because he's off doing like Clark family stuff. stuff. Clark, yeah, Clark stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this, again, I'm just reiterating that the the whole setup that they had was fantastic. They ran it smoothly. Uh, and I get, again, I don't, so here's my caveat is mm -hmm. Tony and I were there the first day mm -hmm. in the first two hours of this release. And I drove up and there was no cars before me, no cars after me. When I drove up, there was one car like checking out yeah. uh, and then I checked out and then went and then I got into line and there was, you know, the that area was kind of filled up. Um, they sent me to the last one, which was four, which Tony conveniently got sent to. We're the best. But there, but there was no traffic. There was yeah. nothing to indicate that this was like some insane event. As I was driving there and I was seeing traffic on the highway, I'm like, oh, my God, all these people are coming to get beers. I'm like, I'm <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, they're getting off a division, not Ogden. I'm like, all right, keep going, keep going. And I was like, oh, Ogden exit's going to be bad. Nobody there. I was right up. I was worried at one point once I left. They're like, okay, so just make a right and go. And I'm like, okay. And I'm driving past United Center. And I'm like. I don't, I don't see anybody else going this way. I don't see anything. What the hell? And then I saw the blue sign at the end of the street, and I was like, oh, okay. And I remember to look at the map. I'm like, oh, that's right. It's taking me back to Fulton. Fulton and what? The actual... Yeah, so I actually didn't go that way. Like, I was following another guy in front of me, too, and he kept, like, breaking, and I was like, screw this guy. So I turned right, and I went down a bunch of side streets and cut over back to Damon, and then went up to Fulton, <laughs> but... Nice. <laughs> yeah, I made it there. I, I was alive. Good. Um, 
what I don't know is what they put on my window. I was like, I wish I could have that. Like whatever it was that they hung on the window. I thought the same thing. It was like this big blue rubber band thing they put on my uh, yeah. passenger side window. I wish I had it. I thought I was going to be able to keep it, but I guess not. They need it for yeah. the rest of the, the, the days. I guess if you're a yep. last person, uh, you know, you'll, you'll, maybe you'll get it. Uh, I didn't, I forgot to mention that too. This is a different type of glass they gave us to this year. It used to be those little, uh, Tasters, this is like a UFO. I love this. <laughs> no, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. So Goose Island, thank you very much again um, for putting out fantastic uh, barrel-aged deliciousness and uh, treating your Chicago loyalists to prop because prop has become a yearly staple in our lives here on the show um, and uh, many other uh, craft beer drinkers lives as well. And we, we appreciate the the good work that you keep on doing for us that we do. All right, Brandon. Um, this is it, baby, right? That's it, man. All right. Well, I love you, man. Thank you for sitting here on a Saturday night, which, you know, this will be Monday morning when I was listening to this, but uh, <laughs> Saturday night drinking this uh, with me, this is a lot of fun. And uh I'm just going to kick back and enjoy uh, the nice weather we have left here in Chicago. That's right. I wore shorts today in November. That's pretty great. I wore shorts the last couple of days. Today I didn't. Mm. Well, you know, can't always. And I'm like, I need to shower. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. All right. I I just like I just feel like sticky. I'm like, (laughs) shorts or pants were not the good idea today. Like, come on. You killed me. Anybody whose mouth was salivating from this beer is now just gone (laughs) that's why there's things that get cut out of a podcast tony all right yeah i'm gonna totally cut this out it's cut out it's gone all right everybody till next time bye you know i have the power to (laughs) re-download and cut shit out if i want to that's make it sound as shitty as possible oh yeah i never thought about that oh no i'm gonna change all the passwords A bourbon cup. <laughs> a bourbon cup. Just crack your prop and drink it up. Yeah, we should cut that out because it's such a good song. It's so sweet. Toby Maguire was a terrible Spider Man. Fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> No, Toby Maguire was not a great Spider-Man, but I was okay if he was the only Spider-Man until we got into like changing Spider-Mans like every single time. I was remiss to be like, all right, this is what we got. And now we got it. <sighs> we get back no. into this. We, we doing this. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> no, now I want to talk about Spider-Man. <laughs> Although... <laughs> Are we double ending? You're gonna double. You want to double end this? You want to double end this after the final four? <laughs> what are we drinking next? What are we doing? Oh Jesus! Mr. Eight. Mr. Eight. <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. Special stout number four. Let's do it. No! <laughs> do not do that. I'm coming over. Whatever Bourbon County you got, we're drinking. Start the fire. That's why I told you to come by in the first place in case we did this shit. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you made pizzas and you didn't bring me any. I was like, I almost commented. I was like, that's why you couldn't come, because you couldn't bring me some fucking pizza. Damn right. Homemade pizza. That's right. I spatch catch. Uh, spatch catch? I spatch catch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I got made fun of a lot for this. I spatch cocked a chicken for the first time and did it on the grill. And that, honestly, so I'd been beer canning chicken on the grill forever. And I'm like, this was the best chicken I've ever had. What is What does that mean, spatch catch? So spatchcock is when you literally cut out <laughs> spatchcock. <laughs> you cut out the bone in the back. You cut out the backbone and then like s- like lay it out flat. So it's just like the 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 thighs and the wings and the legs go out on each side flat and it's just flat <laughs> on a board. And you I like how you're explaining what it means to lay it flat. But yeah, I get it. Yeah. So and you can see I'm moving my arms too. 
I'm actually videoing this too, so it's going to be really weird when I watch this back. Oh, no. So you flatten that on the board, like on the grill, and you just cook it like that. So I did it the same way I normally do chicken is I lift up the skin and I put a bunch of butter under it. Mm, so good. Because it makes the skin like super crispy. And, and then it, I put the... Moisture too. So, yeah. So I put the seasoning all over it or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Put it on the grill and it was like normally like to, like to beer can. It was like a almost a four pound chicken. Oh, to beer can that would take like almost two hours. Yeah. It got done in almost an hour exactly. You know, this really would have been a great, that's awesome. This would have been a great weekend for us to get together to drink and smoke some uh, meat in your backyard. I know. Hey, maybe next weekend. Got any plans? Sitting here doing the same shit. <laughs> I think we need to play the After the Final Pour theme song again, though, when we're done here. It's a double ending. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because I was like, if you're coming, I was like, dude, I got cigars. We can hang out by the fire. Like, uh. yeah, I just you're not that big of a cigar person and neither am I. But I'm like, I got them. Somebody's got to smoke. Them. I would have I would have gotten I would have uh, uh, given it a try. I, there have been some cigars where I've liked in my life. Not all of them, but I have. But I fear the Bourbon County would be good. So I got the reason I bought I bought these cigars when I was in St. Louis or not, not St. Louis, uh, St. Joseph, when I was visiting uh, my in-laws. And my buddy on works for Drew Estates Cigars. Okay. Um, he used to be a Chicago guy. They hired him. He moved down to Miami. He's living the Miami. high life in Miami. Yeah. He's living the high life down there. So I messaged him and I was like, or I told my father-in-law, I was like, hey, yeah, my buddy works for this place called Drew Estates. He goes, oh, my God. He's like, I like their acid. I like their this, this, this. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that means. I don't know anything about cigars. <laughs> Like acid, so, what? So I messaged him and I was like, "Hey, do you got any recommendations for cigars? Like my father-in-law likes cigars, and he's talking about acid and blah blah." blah. He goes, "Oh, acid is like our most like level cigar for like people that really don't smoke cigars. It's very even." And I was like, "So I bought two of those." And then he goes, "I have my brother-in-law never smoked cigars, and he went into a place and they sold him ones that were coffee cigars." Ooh. And he bought those. He goes, he really loved those. So that was this. So I bought two of the acid ones and two of the coffee ones. And um, during election night, I was supposed to smoke one of the, I had smoked one of the, like the lighter ones or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I thought I was smoking one of the coffee ones, but I realized after I had opened it, it was the same yeah. thing. It was the lighter one. So oh, now I have no. two of the coffee ones oh. waiting for us. Yeah, that would have been, actually would have been perfect because had I, you know, we could have drank a Cafe Death and had one of those. Oh, next, next time. time. <laughs> next time. Seriously, next weekend. I'm, I think I'm free. I think I'm free, baby. Looks like uh, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how that works out right now in these days. But hey, who knows? Yep. We might have a better tomorrow. You know what I mean? Always a better tomorrow. You know what? There's always a better tomorrow. I gotta be on. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh yeah, I'm right at the end. Mm-hmm. Oh, I should open my King Henry. I'm, a, I'm on my way. On my <laughs> way, <laughs> Laura. I, Laura, I gotta go to Brandon's. Why? Uh, we gotta do this thing. Well, that was like that was like uh, election night when I dropped that shit off at your house, and <laughs> yeah. you're like, I for a beer. I came home and I walked in the house, and Becca's like, "How'd it go?" I was like, "I dropped it off," and she goes, well, "What are you doing?" I said, like, "I'm going back to Tony's." <laughs> She's like, "Why?" I was like, "He invited me over for a beer, and I didn't see the message till I just about got home." She's like. All right. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. That was great. We had uh, we did a little voting poll on which uh, metro, or metro Jesus, which Maplewood beer. Uh, by the way, um, Son of Juice won that. that yep, uh, I know. Poll. Oh yeah, that's right. You did see it. Sorry, I forget. Um, and then <laughs> you and I decided we wanted to have one more beer, come inside and watch <laughs> some of the election, and we split one more cafe death. So that was that was a nice way to top off the night for me. Yeah, that was it was a good night. I didn't realize it, I didn't realize it was going to steamroll into several other nights of like wondering what the fuck is going on. But but hey, waking up this morning, uh, Laura and I got up early and we we're hanging out and we started watching. We didn't really have a lot to do, so we were like, "Oh, let's watch some Netflix." So we watched. We got up pretty fucking early. It was like six o'clock in the morning, um, and we. Fuck. Man, that's what we do. That's what we do now. Even with a 20 year old living with us, our child who does not get up before us, we wake up at the butt crack of dawn. And we started watching, I've been watching a uh, chef show with uh, John Favreau on Netflix. And oh, nice. that's why I made pizza tonight. Uh, Cause they were doing a homemade pizza episode and or not homemade pizza episode, but a pizza episode. And we both were watching, we were watching. And before I know it, we both kind of dozed off for about a half hour, 45 minutes. And I was like, okay, I got to get up and get moving. And that's when I looked at my phone and saw the news of there being a change in the election results. So I woke Laura up and I said, hey, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was a, yeah. to quote Ice Cube today was a, was good, a good day. day. Yep. Oh, see, that would have been a good time to drop that after the final four theme song for the third and final time. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, that was our th- song. Oops. <laughs> One more time. This is it. This is it for real. We're done. We're done. Playing everything. Everything's happening. What is happening? Everything. Tony and Brandon drink their own props. Please don't call the cops. When life gives you an empty cup, sweat, sweat, sweat. Just crack a smile and fill it up. Fill it up. All right, welcome to After the Final Pour, where Tony and Brandon drink some more. And at this point, we drank a prop, and now we're going to drink some more. Anyone got some water? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, dude! Oh man, it's almost been an hour. Yeah, maybe we should end this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's I'm, end it. Yeah. Just crack a smile and fill it up. Fill it up. After the final pour. Welcome to Groundhog Day. 